What it is, my channel, Peace and Grease here, bringing you another WDIF, or where do I find? And today, we're talking Neuroids. Now, Neuroids are a rare resource drop similar to Argon Crystals and Oricon Cells, and they are RNG-based. So you can jump into a mission and get one, or you can jump into a mission and get none. They can drop from breakable containers as well as lockers and enemies, but they do not drop in abundance. This is why I have to recommend you bring your farming loadout. This could consist of a Necros or an Avara, or perhaps a Hydroid or Atlas with the Syndicate Augments. I do recommend a Smita Kabat if you happen to have one. And please, my Tenno, get those resource boosters clicking. They are worth the plat. They are absolutely invaluable when it comes to farming resources. Now, when we talk about the quote-unquote best location for farming neuroids, it's very subjective. If you talk to six different players, you're going to get six different answers. A lot of players recommend Eris, uh, moreover, the defense and the survival missions. And those work. However, the time that I invest in those missions versus my gains, I feel like I'm wasting a lot of time. Because I definitely feel like there are other missions that will net me more neuroids in less time. So that's one of the locations I am recommending today, and we'll get to that in a minute. So the first location I'm going to recommend is going to be Earth. Now, let me be upfront right from the get-go here and explain that the drop rate for neuroids on Earth are not that great. However, there are two benefits from Earth. The first being that absolutely everybody has access to Earth. From the brand new player all the way up to the experienced player, everyone has access to Earth. The second reason I have to recommend Earth is it's low level, meaning pretty much any player can jump into Earth and solo these missions with ease. And that's really the, the second reason. So those two reasons for some players are going to outweigh that con of the lower drop rates for neuroids. So I really need to, felt that this needed to be included for those newer players. Now, moreover, I am going to recommend on Earth the Exterminate missions. Now, as I've alluded to in other WDIFs, the reason for this is Exterminate missions do not continually spawn enemies. This is going to allow you to search every square inch of the tile setter map to maximize your gains. And yes, I do have to recommend you actually search every square inch. Now, the next location is probably the reason why you're here. And that is, in my opinion, what the best location is. Now, the, my, in my personal opinion, the best location is going to be Plato on Luda. Lua, excuse me. Now, this is a crossfire exterminate that's a little bit higher level than Earth, obviously. And you're going to be facing Corpus and Grenier. But we do not care about those enemies. There is one specific enemy that is all but guaranteed on Plato, And that's the only one that we really care about. And that is the Sentience. Now... I can already hear some players saying, yo, Peace, why are we talking about sentience? This is about neuroids. Well, there's a very important reason for this, and that is that neuroids are a common drop from sentience. I know, I know, it's not listed in the codex, but trust me, my Tenno, neuroids are a common drop from sentience. All right? So, let's talk about it. Let's, let's talk a few moments about sentience. So, it's important to understand that when you're dealing with sentience, you're going to be dealing with three types. The first is nothing more than just a glorified alarm, and that is the oculist. Now, you want the oculist to see you. You want them to scan you, because upon doing so, they are going to summon the fighter sentience, and those are the dudes we want, as many as we can get. So the Oculist is, as I said, effectively just an alarm system. So if you're using a stealth frame, break that stealth, allow them to scan you, allow them to see you so that they will summon the fighter sentience. Now the two fighter sentience you're going to be dealing with are the Battleist and the Conculist. Now the Battleist uses ranged attacks. So it's going to be shooting at you and even has this Mirage style disco ball of death. The next is the Conculist, which uses a melee attack and even it has this whirlwind of death melee system. So, when we talk about sentience, it's important to understand why a lot of players have difficulty with them. Now, sentience can adapt to your attack types and reduce the amount of damage you deal. Meaning, if you're using a weapon that has slash and corrosive, for example, 
over time, that cinching can build up a resistance to it and reduce the incoming damage from you. So it's important to have in your loadout a wide variety of damage types so that you can continually switch between weapon to weapon. Now, the chink in the sentient's armor is this. While they can adapt to your damage types, they cannot adapt to all damage types at one time. So, from switching to weapon to weapon, you're forcing that sentient to adapt to a new damage type, and in doing so, they're going to have to give up a resistance to another damage type, which will allow you to switch back to your previous weapon. So let me show you my loadout. Now I'm running the Archiplasmor with gas, magnetic, and radiation damage. Now if for some reason from the get-go, if I'm not able to drop the sentient and it builds up a resistance to this primary, I can switch to my secondary which is the Hystrix. Now the Hystrix has four different types of quills. A poison quill, fire quill, ice quill, and electric quill that I can switch to on the fly. Now, it also has a good amount of puncture damage. So, if the sentient builds up resistance to my primary, I switch to my secondary, I force the sentient to adapt to all of these damage types, which then it will give up its resistance to my Archiplasmor. I can switch back to it and finish it off. So, uh, that's my typical plan of attack when it comes to sentients. Now... There are several type there are several frames that you could use that are great for fighting sentients. Obviously, Umbra being one. Obviously, any of the Umbra mods uh, giving you more damage against sentients are going to be ideal. But pretty much any frame that can temporarily shut down the sentients is going to work just fine. And you don't need Umbra. You don't need the Umbra mods. There, we as players have been taking down sentients for years before Umbra and his mods ever came along. So pretty much any frame that can shut down the sentient temporarily is going to work just fine and dandy. So uh, Rhino with his stomp, temporarily stun locking the sentients works. Uh, Harrow chaining him up. Equinox putting him to sleep. Uh, perfect example here, Ivara using a sleep arrow. Any of these frames and more will work just fine and dandy for fighting sentients. Now, prior to this video, I did a solo run on Play-Doh, and I'll show you the results from that. Now, before you dismiss this, let me paint you a picture and so that you can kind of get the idea of the potential of Plato. Now, first and foremost, understand that I only got one squad of sentients to spawn. Just one. That's all I got. I got two sentients. That's it. And no more. So that definitely impacted my neuroid gains here. I, I should have gotten more with more sentients, but for some reason, I could only get a couple of sentients to spawn. So that definitely hurt my neuroid numbers. Second, my Smita Kabat is a bad, bad kitty because it refused to give me the drop buff. Refused. So, you know, the kitties, Smita kitties in, in timeout. Bad kitty. <clears throat> now, I'm also not running a resource booster. Uh, and that would have seriously, that would have doubled my drops effectively. So all of, if any of those factors had changed, any of them, any single one of them, it would have upped my neuroid count uh, dramatically in some cases. So I don't consider six neuroids to be a lot. I don't consider it to be a little. I consider it to be just about mm, average-ish for Play-Doh. Um, honestly, I expect more from my Play-Doh runs, but uh, given that I couldn't get any more sentients to spawn, my kitty was, was being very difficult, and I didn't have a resource booster, six neuroids in less than 19 minutes is okay. And that's right, it, it took me less than 19 minutes to get those six neuroids. So, all things considered, give it a try. Let me know how your runs go. And let me know how your neuroid farming is going in the comment section down below. Until next time, peace and grease.